Hi friends, let's talk about which beef is the healthiest and it's not what you think. We will talk about the different beef products sold in the supermarkets and how they compare to plant-based alternative meat products. I'm sure you know, like all other animal products, beef contains nine essential amino acids. Animal meats are also a good source of vitamin B12, which is important for your blood cells, your brain, and your nervous system. All animals, they get their vitamin B12 from bacteria. But if you don't like meat, like vegetarians and vegans, you can't rely on your gut microbiome to make you B12. You still need to find a reliable source of vitamin B12 because vitamin B12 is essential to your health. And people who are vitamin B12 deficient will get tired, they'll be anemic, they'll have neuropathy, and potentially even get strokes. Everyone over 50 should be on a vitamin B12 supplement regardless of their dietary pattern as with age, you're just less able to absorb vitamin B12 in your food because you make less gastric acid. I take supplements with vitamin B12 daily. And if you wanna know what I take, I have a link in the show notes below. Other essential B vitamins and minerals are also found in beef, which include riboflavin, niacin, zinc, and iron. I think organic, grass-fed, and pasture-raised beef are much healthier to eat as it has 50% more omega-3 free fatty acids, but 50% of a tiny number is still tiny. So grass-fed beef has 65 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids called alpha-linolenic acid, whereas a serving of walnut has 7,718 milligrams of alpha-linolenic acid. So don't rely on beef to get your omega-3 fats, but hopefully organic means no hormones or antibiotics were used to raise that animal. Grass-fed probably tastes different and pasture-raised hopefully means they lived happy lives. A stressed animal will make stress hormones to get pumped into your body when you eat it. Now I'm sure you've seen the label USDA Prime, USDA Choice, and USDA Select. What do they mean? These labels refer to amount of saturated fat or marbling of the meat. Prime is the fattiest and preferred by restaurants. Choice has less marbling and therefore has less saturated fat. Select is the leanest meat cuts. People like the taste of marbleized meat. The most expensive beef in the world is Kobe beef sold in Japan for about $300 per pound or even $50 per ounce. And it's made from four different breeds of Japanese Wagyu black or brown cows. But really only 0.06% of Japanese beef are actually certified Kobe beef. Now, have you ever wondered how Japan, a small island nation, got cows? Initially, these animals were brought in from China as farm workers and for fertilizer to help with Japan's agriculture in the Hyogo prefecture, especially in the city of Kobe. I hope I'm not pronouncing these words wrong. These cattle were essentially isolated from the rest of the world for over 200 years. However, something happened after World War II and people began to eat them. Cattle were fed specific ratios of grains three times a day to make them fat. They also regulated their vitamin levels for marbling. Do you see how what you eat can affect your own fat stores? Did you know that beef is one of the most common foods that gets stuck in the esophagus? You're gonna feel discomfort and distress if you ever get that piece of beef stuck in your esophagus. So this is a medical urgency and you don't want to just sleep it off and see what happens the next day. Go to the emergency department if you feel like something's stuck in your food pipe. Meat in general is one of the most common causes of choking for adults and children alike. Children and the elderly and really anyone who is sick and weak should not be eating steak. Also, if you don't want to worsen your insulin resistance and damage your pancreas, then staying away from the highest saturated fat is really the best way to go about navigating your food. Scientists have infused saturated fats to show that they can marbleize human muscle, which means that the person is getting more insulin resistant. At the same time, saturated fat can also harm the pancreas, inhibiting its ability to secrete insulin, which then leads to insulin-dependent diabetes. So Kobe beef is really from an insulin-resistant Wagyu cow. Obviously, the healthiest meat to eat is the leanest meat with the least amount of saturated fat. Japan has some of the highest standard for beef quality in the world. Yet in September 20th, 2001, even Japan's cattle industry got hit with mad cow disease from bovine spongiform encephalopathy thought to have been infected through contaminated imported cattle feed from Britain. Now you would think mad cow disease is from a germ like a bacteria, virus, fungi, or parasite. Nope, this is a chronic degenerative condition caused by an infectious protein called a prion. And that prion accumulates in the central nervous system. Humans can get infected if you eat contaminated mammalian body parts like muscle, 
bone marrow, and especially nervous tissue like brain. Prions are a great example to demonstrate that you literally are what you eat. They take the concept of eating animals as a perfect human food to another level. Plant proteins, even from genetically modified plants, don't do this. Besides cows, you can theoretically get prion disease from deer and elk-related animals. In 1996, 10 human cases of prion disease called creutzfeldt jakob disease were confirmed and linked to the exposure of infected mad cows. That's one reason why brain tissue is no longer sold in the U.S. My mom actually gave me pork brains as a kid, and I've been concerned about mad pig disease until I found out that pigs are more resilient against prion disease. Unfortunately, no amount of heat, even if you charcoal your meat black, destroys prions. They are heat resistant, and they even withstand normal sterilization processes. The world can thank Great Britain for its unscrupulous farming practices of feeding an herbivore the meat and bones of other cattle, creating this incurable disease that is now in the food supply around the world and can be passed on to humans who eat beef products and beef bone broth. In humans, creutzfeldt jakob disease is a progressive, transmissible, and universal neural degenerative condition that has a really long incubation period for decades. So what you bite into as a child can potentially bite you back. Have you heard of Kuru? Kuru is a rare fatal brain disease in the 1950s and 1960s that infected 1,004 people in Papua New Guinea who ate dead people. That's why in Deuteronomy 1421, it says, do not eat anything you find already dead. To protect our food supply, the USDA implemented several new guidelines to prevent the spread of prion disease in our cattle. But in 2003, Prion disease was detected in the U.S. too. Now, the reality is prion disease is hard to diagnose and pretty rare in humans. What's quite common, though, is E. coli, which has contaminated tons of ground beef through the years. If you can buy a piece of steak and ask your butcher to grind it fresh, that would be best than buying any prepackaged ground meat. But most people don't live by a butcher, so there are three types of ground meat, ground beef, ground chuck, and ground round steak. Here's some good practices to follow when you are choosing ground meat packages. Number one, pick cold and tightly wrapped packages and get the package from the bottom of the refrigerator. Number two, make sure that the surface of meat is red colored, like fresh blood. Number three, handle the meat with a grocery bag and sanitize your hands after handling it. Make sure to separate that meat in your shopping basket with its own bag. And honestly, I could recommend putting it on the bottom of your cart so that the meat juice doesn't drip on your other items. Always remember to refrigerate that ground beef ASAP when you get home and place it on the lowest shelf of the refrigerator or freezer. The general rule is if you don't use your meat by one or two days, you really need to freeze it. Now remember when you take it out of the freezer, Defrost your meat in the refrigerator, never defrost it at room temperature. And if you do defrost it in the microwave, you want to cook it immediately. The other thing is keep the ground beef separate from all your other raw foods so that you don't get E. coli or any other bacteria. Now, there are different fat ratios in the ground meats. So people who want to reduce their saturated fat intake should pick a ground beef package that says not less than 85% lean beef. But of course, the lean beef will be a little harder to chew. And a great way to soften your ground meat is to add some shredded starch like potatoes or sweet potatoes, rolled oats, or ground flax seeds. Ground beef is especially prone to degradation and spoiling due to it being already in tiny particles. Make sure you handle the meat as little as possible. Use gloves and do not rinse raw meat plates in the sink. Try to use something disposable or make it go straight into the dishwasher immediately. And you also don't want to use surfaces that can't be boiled, baked, or placed in the dishwasher because you can't clean that. When I used to handle raw meat, I would work on a baking tray. And when I was done, I would bake the tray to disinfect it before I wash the tray. This way, I don't get it in my sink and sponge. The other thing is you always want to make sure you cook your meat to internal temperature at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're making meat patties or loaves of meat, the center should not be pink. And if you use an oven, make sure your temperature is no lower than 325 degrees Fahrenheit to kill the germs. So dehydrating raw meat at low temperatures is just allowing bacteria to grow. Make sure you always wash all the utensils with soapy water. And personally, I would boil all the utensils first before I washed it with soapy water. Don't forget about your cutting board and sponges as those surfaces need to be disinfected often and you may want to boil it 
Let's take a look at Impossible Patties and Beyond Meat and compare which one is better for your health. So that we're on the same page, the worst ingredients in any food are prions, germs that are alive like E. coli, trans fats, saturated fats, sodium, cholesterol, nitrates, and phosphates. So obviously any product without the possibility of having prions is a check in my book. So Impossible Burgers and Beyond Burgers can't possibly have prions because they are not from mammals. Now you may not like genetically modified foods and that's fine because there's plenty of other foods to eat. But if your argument is that it is unsafe, then I would say that isn't what the data shows. That's because I looked up Impossible Burger and Beyond Meat to look for recalls on this website and the only recalls I could find are from animal products. So it's crazy how millions of people are getting sick from animal products and yet people are okay with that. If we had this many recalls for prescriptions, the medicines would be pulled from the market and the companies would be sued into bankruptcy. There seems to be a separate substandard for food safety. I've actually tried both types of fake meats and think that the impossible meat tastes a little closer to ground beef. Impossible burgers are made from soy protein. Soy has been shown to improve postmenopausal symptoms, reduce weight, reduce blood sugars, reduce blood cholesterol, reduce insulin levels, and keep people full longer. And the bonus is if you eat soy as a kid, it actually helps to prevent breast cancer as adults. However, soy protein is not the same as soy and the beneficial phytoestrogens are not present in soy protein. A four ounce serving Impossible Burger has 19 grams of protein, zero grams of cholesterol, no hormones, and no antibiotics, but it still has 13 grams of fat with six grams of it being saturated fat. Now Beyond Meat is made out of pea protein and has 20 grams of protein, 14 grams of fat, zero grams of cholesterol, and five grams of saturated fat. They both have 367 milligrams of sodium, more than half of what we really need in a day, but still far less than what the American Heart Association recommends, which is less than 1,500 milligrams a day. However, the average American diet is 3,400 milligrams of sodium a day. No wonder so many people have high blood pressure. High blood pressure is really an imbalance of sodium and potassium. So I always recommend working on potassium rich foods, which are beans and greens. And I would prefer impossible meat because it has twice as much potassium than beyond meat and 99% of Americans simply don't eat enough potassium. Let's actually see what's in beef. Four ounces of an 80% lean ground beef has the same amount of protein, but has 8.6 grams of saturated fat and 80 grams of cholesterol. Now, if you're worried about hormones, then meat definitely has hormones since all mammals make their own hormones. Most animals will also have traces of antibiotics unless it clearly states that they're antibiotic free and it's labeled organic. Antibiotics are used in the farm industry to promote growth. And this is a real reason for why I'm losing my tools that save lives. And you can help yourself, your children, and the rest of the world by refusing to buy animal products that use antibiotics. If we don't all help, once curable infectious diseases in our lifetime will not be curable within really the next 10 years. This is my reality, and I hope all of you will help preserve antibiotics for the world by boycotting any animals that are fed antibiotics. Now, a common reason why people want to switch to plant-based meats is to reduce saturated fat and cholesterol, which is pretty high in beef. Now, red meat has a bad reputation. Since the World Health Organization classified beef as a carcinogen due to its nitrate and heme iron concentration. If you haven't noticed, colon cancer rates are rising in young people because now we have several decades of crappy food. In the old days, people would eat their meat with whole plants so that the fiber and phytonutrients help to mitigate the inflammation for meats. But for the last few decades, those animal meats are no longer buffered by fiber, but instead swallowed with empty calories from processed carbohydrates. So the colon is exposed to toxins without any help. So any added other toxin will add stress to the already stressed immune system. And this is why I find it unacceptable to put any nitrites, which are also labeled as probable carcinogens. These nitrites are added to food to preserve these foods. Nitrates aren't found in ground beef, but are commonly found in processed beef, such as lunch meats and beef jerky. And the food industry knows no one likes it, so they label it as natural nitrates in celery juice, which are then treated with bacteria to form nitrites. Hence the term all natural is pretty meaningless. Cyanide, arsenic, and lead, they're all natural. And no one argues that these ingredients shouldn't be in our food supply. 
we do actually a pretty good job of not allowing added cyanide. But why is it acceptable to eat chocolate with lead, or to eat rice with arsenic, or to eat nitrites in our meats? Curing, salting, and smoking anything are all ways to increase cancer. Then you have polychlorinated biphenols and dioxins trapped in the fat. Polychlorinated biphenols. And dioxins are not purposely put in meats. They are man-made environmental toxins that collect in fat. The problem is that they cause cancer in people and in animals. And when you eat animal fat, you're essentially eating the toxic trash people left in our environment. Now, if you don't want to eat animal scraps and possibly sawdust from the floor, you should reconsider eating hot dogs. These meats trap. Cadmium and other heavy metals, which are cancer-causing toxins that your body simply can't get rid of. This is how powerful sugar, salt, and fat are. Add enough salt, and you can mask the taste of just about anything. And this is also how shops cover up the oxidized metallic taste of old meat, which can actually have that taste within a few hours when they marinate the meat. They cover up the taste. Now, beef readily oxidizes because they are so rich in the metal iron. And literally, if you have iron sitting in a wet environment, it makes rust. So it's like eating tiny rusty red nails. It just doesn't taste good. Have you ever wondered why the meat looks so plump and juicy? Now, if you had a third degree burn, your own muscles will start drying out within hours, and we would have to keep your wounds dressed and moist and keep your body hydrated. But That piece of meat, there's no hydration source. They actually inject phosphates in meats to hydrate them. However, when you eat phosphates, that's not what they do to your body. Phosphates actually drop your serum calcium, which is actually super important for healthy muscles. Phosphates can interfere with your body's own ability to regulate your calcium, especially if you've had your parathyroid glands removed. Now, excess phosphates—they're actually harmful to your bones, pulling out your calcium, making them weak. And susceptible to fractures. When you eat high amounts of phosphates, it will bind to the calcium. This mineral complex is now called calcium phosphate, and it is essentially teeny tiny bone fragments that can deposit in your blood vessels, making plaques to block your blood flow to vital organs like your eyes, your lungs, your heart, and brain. And by the way, phosphates are also found in canned sodas. With fruit-flavored sodas having the highest amount of phosphates of all the canned sodas. Now, heme iron deserves a special mention. Did you know that heme iron is toxic to malaria parasites? That's actually how we kill malaria. Some of the drugs block the parasite's ability to detoxify heme iron. Too bad we don't have that enzyme in our bodies. Now, when our own blood cells rupture, heme iron is released and causes a whole cascade of inflammation. That causes blood vessel injury and then tissue injury. So when you eat a big load of ground beef in your gut, those cells rupture and release a big load of heme iron that can also form in nitrosyl compounds, causing DNA damage. One of them is called methyl nitrosyluria, which is a known carcinogen. Now this is the same stuff that is made by smoking cigarettes. And it's also shown to alter sperm DNA. Now, these are all observational studies, as it is unethical to randomize people to smoke. Despite not having randomized controlled trials, most people agree that cigarette smoking is bad. But when it comes to food, people demand large randomized controlled trials to give up what they intuitively know are bad, and would rather. Pop or inject drugs to be able to eat their favorite foods, or rationalize why their abnormal labs are perfectly fine. I'm not a fan of iron or heme iron, not even in the Impossible Burger or in Beyond Meat. But eating soybeans with the meat appears to have a suppressive effect on the N nitrosyl concentrations that can be reduced by 40%. That's because the fiber in soybeans traps them, and then they are flushed out in your bowel movements. So I think Impossible Meat and Beyond Meat are both perfectly fine transition foods, but ultimately eating the whole food is best. Now, real soybeans have more fiber than either the fake meat brands. So my recommendation is whether you decide to eat beef or Impossible Meat or Beyond Meat, eat three and a half ounces of edamame beans. And other fibrous foods, so that you can first build that fiber wall to help you trap the heme iron and whatever else toxins are in the meat that you're trying to eat. Because if it doesn't touch your colon, 
then it's not a problem. And by the way, it is not healthy not to poop at least once a day. Besides hemorrhoids, bloating, carcinogenic toxins, you can also increase your cholesterol and increase your estrogen. And if you want to know how to get epic poops, watch the next video.